Hi, I'm Ray Foreman, and today I'm with Chris Stoy. Uh, we're part of the team of Warrior for Justice that are looking out for your best interest and in trying to seek justice in your case. Today, Chris, I want to talk to you about something that I invented. Uh, it probably are always existed, but <laughs> I may have given it a new name, and that's my block method. Yeah, I used it a time or two on some depositions, that, and you've kind of walked me through it before. I thought it was very effective in this deposition I took, so I'm really interested to learn some more about it. Some people refer to, you know, chapters. Um, while blocks may look like chapters, they're not exactly the same. Okay. And so I'd like to give you my distinction. Now, each block has three elements, and they have to have all three elements or it won't work. And those elements are one, an affirmative statement, two, questions that prove the affirmative statement, and three, a conclusion. And I want you to understand the elements because we're going to talk about them uh, quite a bit. Let me give you an example of what an affirmative statement is. If you're going to start a chapter, and by the way, the block method works in opening, voir dire, closing, direct, and cross. You use this method throughout your entire trial. Well, you gave it to me to use on a defendant who was claiming that she was not negligent for rearing my client because there was an emergency vehicle that was responding. And I swear, after using the block method and, and deposing her and using the questions that you helped script, well, you did script them. After I used those, by the end, she admitted that she was at fault, that she caused the wreck. It was incredible. And I, I remember, I'll be honest, I was like, Ray, if there's no way that this girl is going to admit all this, I can just tell by her attitude. And you said, I think she will. And it worked. My friend Sean Brown just tied a case in Colorado last week, which was a, a rape case. And he used the virtue block to get the uh, victim to admit that she was deceptive. Yeah. He got a not guilty verdict. <clears throat> what I love about it, too, is that now, granted, not everyone's going to have you to write their blocks for them, but it's something that can be written out before a deposition. And then you can go in there and you can actually read these blocks. Now, you and I agree, like, we're the type who, when we cross-examine someone, we're listening for stuff. Mm -hmm. We don't like scripts, per se, and we're taught that at the Trial Lawyers College. You mm -hmm. know, don't follow your script, put that down and, and listen so that you can react. But I, and I, by all means, I still advocate that, but to an extent, I feel like these virtue blocks are tools that you can take down and use and, ta -ta -ta and get the stuff that you need. I agree, Chris, and thank you for saying that. Virtue blocks are one form of block, but I want you to think about this as ice cubes in a, in a glass. They're very visible and you can see them. This is not advocating to use a script. The water and the liquid and all of the stuff, that's where the listening comes in. You may rearrange your blocks. Part of this method is, uh, depending on what you hear from the witness, these blocks are interchangeable. You can put that block first, you can put that block on top of that one, you can put this block here, because if you have all three elements, the blocks are absolutely interchangeable. They're like the little blocks that we had when we were kids that have letters on them. You can spell words this way, you can spell words this way, you can spell words this way, and you can spell words this way. So tell me again the three elements. Then. Affirmative statement is the first element of a block. Okay. Then you ask a number of questions that prove the affirmative statement to be true, and then your last one is the conclusion, which is a restatement of the affirmative statement. Let me, let me show you what an affirmative statement is. A lot of people will say, you be the witness. All right. Let's talk about the wreck. All right. That's not an affirmative statement. We don't know what's going on. It's a wreck, something happened. Let's talk about your distracted driving right before the wreck. You see the difference? Yeah. And I don't care what the client's going to say. I mean, maybe maybe opposing counsel's going to object as being argumentative or stating facts, not in evidence. Or, or maybe counsel's testifying, not making a question. Let me show you how to make an affirmative statement into a question. Let's talk about your distractive driving right before the wreck. Would that be okay? Okay. See, that's a question. And they do, I'm not they asking do respond them, that way. I'm not asking you to confess that you were distracted. I'm asking you to now talk about it. And then I want to ask questions that prove you were distracted. But wait a minute. And then I want to do a conclusion that proves the affirmative statement. But way before we get to that, 
Let me explain the energy of the block method. You see these upside down check marks? Yeah. That's the energy that each block must contain. So for example, you could physically drag me to the top of the mountain and push me off, but you'd be exhausted by the time you got me there. Right. I mean, you, you could probably physically do it, but it might take you a week and you'd need a lot of water yeah. and a lot of rest, but you could eventually get me up there. And then you push me off the pinnacle. What I designed the block method to be, and, and I want you to understand, you know what a kill shot is? Yeah, obviously, like a, like a headshot, something that just, boom, knocks them out right then. Yeah, like it's the shot that got the bird, it's the shot yeah. that busted the clay pigeon, it's the shot that knocked them out. I want, the kill shot is represented by this. So, for example, if I get you up to chair level and push you off, you're not going to die. Yeah. You, you might not even sprain your ankle. If I got you up to the first floor of the building and pushed you off, you might break your leg, but you're not going to die. I need the kill shot to be from about the fifth floor so that when you hit the ground on this issue, it's dead. And that's where setup blocks come in. And so let me talk to you about setup blocks because virtue blocks are only one form of setup blocks. So for example, let's use the distractive driving scenario that we've already started. All right. John Nolte taught me that every scenario, he, he said, the fault that I find with lawyers is they want to go right to the gory scene. They want to talk about the crash, the blood, and the seatbelt on or off or whatever. And he goes, the real story is what led up to putting us in this position. So let's talk about our first setup block. What can you think of that might connect with the jury and make the story about this listener that happened the morning before this distracted driving collision? <clears throat> Maybe she was running behind, running late. Running late. All right. Now, if I ask you as a witness, you were running late that morning, weren't you? you no. You see, how, you see how he automatically fought me? Now watch what happens when I create this in a setup block for context. Um, let's talk about how you how late you slept on Monday. Would that be okay? Okay. You usually get up at seven. Uh, yes. But Monday, you slept till eight. Uh, yes. You have to still get ready. Yeah. You have to take a shower. Yeah. Put on your clothes. Yeah. And drive to work. Yeah. That takes time. Yes. Same always. Same time as always. You were running late on Monday. Well, I mean, I don't know if I was running late. You were an hour behind your ordinary schedule. Y yes. All right. Do you see what I just did? I put this in context. Maybe I have to reword it. Maybe I'll never get the witness to agree to late, but that's okay. All I've got to do is prove that this witness in context is running an hour late than normal. What does that make you think as an audience member? Now not be the witness, be the audience member. <clears throat> that I'm a liar. The witness is a liar. You mean the fact that they won't admit to that they were running late? No. Whether they running late or an hour behind schedule, what does that make you think about the wreck? That she was that she was in a hurry. Yeah, that's right. She was in a hurry. Yeah. I didn't say you were in a hurry. Yeah. But you got that from that virtue block. Now we just created a block that can be moved. That doesn't have to be the first block. That can be interchangeable if you have all three elements. So let me show you a block that we may want to put before or after that context block. Now let's do, well, we'll come to scene block later. Well, can I ask something? Yes, so please. like, say for example, in the distracted driving context, you were leading me with, you got up at seven, um, or you, you normally get up at seven, but this time you got up at eight. Now, <clears throat> is it like, you may not know that before you jump into those blocks. So do you ask some open-ended questions before that to figure out what time she got out? I'm assuming I'm doing this at trial and uh -huh. I've already got your deposition. Gotcha. And our interrogatory answer and you've answered that you got up at eight. Okay. I'm, okay. That's I'm making an assumption. From. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So now I'm going to show you how to put a virtue block, which we can move in front of the context block. Let's just assume this bottom level is the context block we just did. Now we want to go up to the second floor with a virtue block. And we might need to switch the order, but let's see. Virtue block. What is a virtue block? A virtue block is a rule, a moral obligation, 
an ethical obligation, or a law. It's something you're supposed to do. And let me just tell you now that it came to me, I meant to say this at the beginning, I created this system out of the way I argue. The way I write every brief, the way I orally argue every case, the way I structure my argument is the same every time. This is what you're supposed to do. This is what you did. That's why I win. So, with that said, here's what <laughs> we got. It's a hard one to beat. Virtue block is what rules do you want to talk about? Well, I'm pretty partial to Rick Friedman's Rules of the Road, so let's talk about that for a minute. I think they're universal. They are, and that's because they're universal truths. Yeah. Now, you will never have a fight getting a witness to agree to a virtue block because virtues are these rules, these ethical codes, these moral values that we're supposed to have. So use them in good health and have fun. Yeah, well, and I would add that when a witness does disagree with obvious things like rules of the road, they they look unreasonable to begin with, right? That's right, because everybody knows it's a universal yeah, truth. So don't get to those listening and those trying this on. If, for example, a witness won't agree to a rule of the road, don't get super frustrated because that just makes the witness look like an idiot. That's exactly right. It's a gift for you. And that's just my little caveat to No, you. I love that. Um, tell me a virtue that you think relates to driving. Um, <clears throat> I'm not gotta, asking this as you as the witness. I'm yeah, asking Chris. I would say for me... It, you got to you can't be distracted that's a huge one these days okay i would put that virtue block up a little higher we're going to come to the distracted virtue block um i want to talk about death and deadly weapons all right so let's talk about how a car can be a deadly weapon okay cars go fast they do cars weigh five to six thousand pounds uh yeah i think so cars can kill you Yes. Cars can be an instrumentality of death and destruction. Yes. See, I should, he didn't fight me at all because everybody knows the answer to those. Everybody knows they're true. And there were only four question virtue blocks, but I had an affirmative statement. All of my questions proved the affirmative statement. I had the same conclusion. And let me give you a little tip. Write your conclusion first and then write your affirmative statement last. It just works out easier yeah. for lawyers to process that way. But look what I just did. I got him to believe that I got hurt him to admit. In the role. I'm thinking of a girl driver, but I got you to admit that it could be a deadly weapon. Now I want to do another virtue block because I want you to climb that mountain on your own. I don't want to drag you to the top of the mountain and get the kill shot. I want you to walk up these stairs that I'm going to build for you. Throw yourself off. And <laughs> I'll just stand out of the way and watch you fall. Yeah. I don't even need to touch you. Yeah. So here's my next virtue block. We've talked about a deadly weapon. Now let's talk about an element in our case. You want to talk about safe, uh, safe distance, controlling speed, keeping a proper lookout. Which one of those would you like to talk about? Uh, safe distance, because I think a hot topic that you and I have been focusing on recently is the, he stopped short. That yeah, pisses us off. I hate this off. defense of he stopped short. I don't even know what that means. Don't get him going on it. All right, so here we go. <laughs> Stop short. Um, now, we've just done the deadly weapon virtue yeah. block. Now I'm going to add another virtue block. Um, let's talk about controlling a deadly weapon when somebody stops short. Okay. Is that all right? Sure. You can't control what a driver in front of you is going to do. No, I cannot. You can only control what you're going to do. Yes. Sometimes dogs run in front of your car. I guess. Sometimes tumbleweeds blow in front of your car. I guess. Sometimes people pull out in front of your car. Yeah. A lot of reasons why you may have to stop unexpectedly. Yeah you have to follow at a safe enough distance so that you don't collide with somebody who may have to stop in an emergency. Yeah. Stopping short may have been caused by an emergency. I guess you can say that. You see what I'm saying? It worked. I mean, it really does work though. And I, I'm doing this off the cuff. Yeah. If, if I was writing out the questions, they would be so tight that there would be no argument. Because let me tell you something. If you get an argument with your question, it's something wrong with your question. Because on a virtue block, there is no argument to your question. If there is an argument to your question, 
you need to go retool your virtue block question. Yeah, and in that interaction just there, I was trying to play the role of the lady that I deposed the other day, and she quite frankly did have that, yeah, I mean, it's you could just tell she's like, can't argue with that. And meanwhile, her attorney's over there just shaking because mm -hmm. he didn't prepare her for any of this. And quite frankly, I don't know how he could have. What are you going to, like I said earlier, we need to make her say no to that. Right. <laughs> like, now, I've got a context block up here, but I probably should have wrote element block, but I forgot it. Now, we, we've climbed this stairway too, and we're coming to your virtue block that you taught. Now, let's talk about this third block. Um, what are the elements of the call in your petition for this suit? You said fail to control speed. Yeah, distracted fail, driving. Distracted driving. Yeah. Fail to keep a proper lookout. Yep. Fail to con uh, maintain a safe following distance. Yeah. And maybe some other stuff. Yeah. Some well, let's things. just talk with those four. Okay. Let's talk about safety requirements when driving a deadly weapon. Okay. You have to keep a proper lookout when driving a car. Yeah. Because it's a deadly weapon. I, I don't know. It, it can be deadly. I guess. Uh, I want to get this question to where you won't guess or fight me. You have to keep a proper lookout yeah. while driving a car. Yes. Because it can cause death. Yes. You have to keep a safe, clear distance while driving a car. Yes. Because it can cause death and damage. Yes. You have to control your speed while driving a car. Yes. Because it can control, it can cause death and damage. I guess, yeah. And I don't remember the other one. Following too close. You have to not follow too close while driving a car. Yeah. Because that can cause death and damage. Yeah. Okay. Still not fighting me. So now we're on the... We just added the elements blocks. We just proved our cause of action. So here we go. You were following the... Where are we on? Are we on the... Where are we now? We're on the fourth block. And the what was that virtue? Dri distracted driving. Yeah, so let's now focus in. What we just did was we created the elements broadly of the four that we have in our case. Mm -hmm. Now let's focus in on distracted driving. We need to tell the jury, why are you not doing these things? Okay. So let Now remember, we just did this elements block. So I'm going to say, in the last block, we talked about the elements of driving a deadly weapon. You remember that? Yes. Now let's tell the jury why you did not follow those rules. Oh, I, I don't, I mean, I, okay, I don't think, whatever. We'll see. I, I will even deny it. Say, well, I did follow the rules. I, I did follow the rules. We'll see about that. Okay. All right, so what was your he headline for this virtue block? Um, <clears throat> distracted driving? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be wrong to drive while distracted. Yes. It'd be wrong to drive while texting. Yes. It'd be wrong to drive while talking on the phone. Well, unless it's Bluetooth. If you're talking on the phone and it's not Bluetooth, that'd be wrong. Yes. Be dangerous. Yes. Be risky. Yes. Be wrong to be picking up trash out of your console or looking for chains because you're headed to McDonald's. Maybe. Anything that you do that causes you to be distracted from driving is dangerous. Yes. There's the virtue block. Now I've got her to admit that distract, distracted driving is a bad thing. I'm going to add another block that's going to say, and I changed this one because I started with, let's tell the jury why you didn't follow those rules, but I wanted to do a virtue block of distraction. So now i got a distraction block. Now we're on block five. Let's tell the jury what caused you, what caused this wreck. Mm -hmm. Say, I don't have to make it about what's well, your fault. Let's talk to you about what caused this wreck. You're thinking because he stopped too short. I'm thinking because you're not, you're distracted. Yeah. Right. You don't know how fast you were driving. Let, mm -hmm. let, here's my headline for this one, my affirmative statement. Let's talk about your lack of awareness at, right before the crash. Okay. You don't know how fast you were driving. No. Police report confirms you told the police officer you didn't know how fast you were driving. Yeah. You never saw brake lights. I thought I think they weren't working. You told the police officer in the report you never saw brake lights. Yes. You didn't have time to react. Uh, yeah, you're right, because he stopped short. I didn't ask you if he stopped short. I asked you if you had time to react. No, I did not. And you were on your cell phone looking for directions at the time of the crash. Is that right? I don't recall. 
Okay. Here's the police report. It says you told the police officer at the scene you were on your cell phone. Yes. Okay. You would agree with me that if you were distracted, you wouldn't see headlights? Correct. You wouldn't see, I mean, brake lights. I said headlights. Correct. You wouldn't see brake lights. Correct. You might not see when the car began to stop. I mean, I was trying to look. And if you were distracted and looked up at the last minute, you wouldn't have time to brake? No. That's not the plainest fault in that scenario, is it? No. Okay. That block is finished. Yeah. And then if that didn't, if you don't believe that's the end of it, you just add another block. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. But you see what I did? Do you see the energy? That's what these reverse check marks are. Every single block needs to have that energy flow. And then you stack them up on each other and you climb up to the pinnacle and then you get the kill shot on each point that you're trying to make. Yeah. I've got another one. So I, I asked you the other day, I had a deposition of a defendant who I knew was going to admit negligence. He's a decent guy, you know, and he did in the deposition. But one thing that I struggled with was <clears throat> knowing that he was going to downplay the plaintiff's injuries. And I said, and I, di I didn't do a great job in the deposition and I talked to Rafe afterwards, uh, talked to you afterwards, and uh, it's how to handle that defendant who says that my client wasn't injured. So to set the scene, this is a wreck, uh, a rear end wreck where my client steps out of the car afterwards and he has a bloody lip but the defendant testifies that, and this is because of my bad deposition taking, testifies that he saw the plaintiff get out. He had a banged up, banged up lip, but there's no way he could be that injured because he didn't go to the hospital, wasn't in an ambulance, wasn't really showing any signs of pain, like holding his back or anything like that, and just would never admit that, you know, this guy could still be hurt. He just, he's like, he must not have been hurt, must not have been hurt. And he didn't have a horrible attitude, so I'll say he's not going to make a horrible witness in front of the jury. But how would you, let me play that role of that guy, that defendant, how would you cross-examine me so that I will at least concede something about the guy could be hurt? Can okay. you do that? Sure. Let me just see who's calling me right quick. Okay. Um, sorry, this is real time. <laughs> um I would start with some virtue blocks. Um, so I'm going to stay true to my method. Um, let's talk about your lack of medical training. Okay. Well, hold on. That's the second block. First block is let's talk about training to diagnose medical conditions. All right. We want doctors to be trained. Yes. We want medical professionals to be trained. Yes. We want medical service providers to be trained. Yes. Because they get to diagnose injuries. Yes. They get to treat them. Yes. And we want them to be well trained so that their diagnosis and treatment is accurate. I agreed. Now let's talk about your lack of medical training. You've never been trained as a doctor. You're right. As a nurse. Yeah. As correct. a medical professional. Yeah. As anybody in the healing arts. Correct. You have no ability and no training to diagnose anybody's injuries. Correct. You have no idea what a person looks like with a closed head injury. No, I mean, no. You have no idea how long it takes the brain to swell to cause uh, paralysis, uh, unconsciousness, or maybe even death. No, I don't. You have no idea how long a person can stand and talk before they succumb to injuries that present themselves at a later time? No, I don't. And so your conclusion that the plaintiff wouldn't hurt is based on no training, no experience. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess you're right. Okay, do you see what I did there? I got a virtue block to get you agreeing and going up the energy path. See, it's all about the energy. Yeah. I get you going up here and you go, well, I've already agreed to that. Yeah. That is true. You know, yeah, that's true too. No, I don't have any of that. And I can feel it playing that role. It's like, shoot, man. And if anyone's worth worth anything, once they've been led up that path, they know that there's no going back down. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, you know. if you do go back down, you look foolish and exactly. the jury gets mad. That's what yeah. Brad was saying earlier. It's like riding the ski lift up and not skiing down, right? Yeah, <laughs> or jumping off. Yeah. I mean, 
everybody's going to say, well, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about damage blocks. Um, and by the way, virtue blocks are important because look what I did. I did a, a short virtue block and then I did a kill shot block. Actually, I did a virtue block, I did a context block, and then I did a kill shot block. And so moving them around is so simple because you never have to worry about transitions. If you've got the affirmative statement, the questions that prove the affirmative statement and the conclusion, it's a complete block and it literally will stack on top, set beside, go in front of, you can move them whichever way you want. Yeah. But virtue blocks are set up blocks that help us elevate the energy and ratchet up the stakes, if you will. Yeah. How do I practice this? You know, because this is not something, I feel like I'm going to have to work on this just like I have to work on all of my other trial skills. Absolutely. You have a friend or a colleague or a loved one, a parent, somebody that you're very close to? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> you don't want to say, you know, I love you. I love you too. Okay. Do a virtue block right now in a conversation that tells why it's important for you to feel love or how you experience love or why it's important to you about whether well, I'm, I'm seeking the love from someone or that I'm, how, why do you need somebody to tell you that they love you uh for validation purposes okay so all right validation is going to be the second block let's talk about general terms of love yeah are you a person that likes to hear someone loves you or that they show you that they love you? Show, show me. Okay, let's talk about, that's a nice virtue block about showing love. Yeah. So let's talk about all the ways you can show someone you love them. Um, acts of kindness. That's a good one. Acts of service. That's true. Um, You've read the languages of love, I can tell. I have, but yeah. it, it, it rings true as well. Yeah. Um, but it's doing things. Um, it's not gifts by any means. Yeah, it's like, and it's your saying. What is your saying? You know, you Don't have this quote. Tell me you love yeah. me. Show me, and I'll decide. Yeah, I mean, it's I have that same feeling. So it's it's the acts of service, the um, and not big ones, not grand ones. It's the little things. It's the little things. We both like that. You know? Right. So let's just put this virtue block together. Let's talk about how you show someone you love them. Okay. You do acts of kindness. Yeah. You do uh, words of affirmation. Yeah. You spend quality time with them. Yeah. You know, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You see how those are sort of conclusory. They're not specific facts. You can take those four things and now make those affirmative statements for four additional blocks. Mm -hmm. So, for example, let's talk about spending quality time. Spending quality time is important because is well, that what I would do? Or? Yeah, no, you put the headline. Let's talk about ways that people can spend quality time. All right, let's talk about ways that people can spend quality time. They can uh, go to the movies together. Don't say they. Tell me. I'm the witness. Uh, you can go to the movies together. That's true. You can do things as simple as sit on a park bench. That's true. You can uh, take time in the morning to just sit there in quietness with someone. That's true. And, and I mean, I could go on, I guess. And so, but then I do, I wrap it back up with an objective. And these are all a important. Conclusion. These are all things that you could do to make sure that you spend quality time with your loved one. Right. Now let's refine it a little bit. Our affirmative statement can change to, let's talk about, and you're the witness, I'm going to be the lawyer. Let's talk about ways that you recognize when someone shows you love. Okay. You do all... They spend time with you. Yes. They don't judge you. Yes. They don't criticize you. Yes. Sometimes you just sit in silence. Yes. On a park bench. Yes. Doing a project. Yes. All of these things you recognize as someone showing you that they love you. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So now that was a great illustration of the uh, three elements of a block. Now, that's what you're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Let's see what you did. Gotcha. <laughs> this is scary. <laughs> yeah. Let's see how you how you held up to that. Um, you work all the time. Yes. You never call. C correct. You never write. No, I don't. You never sit with me on a bench. Well, you know how impatient I am. You never uh, are with me without criticism. Correct. You see what I'm saying? You here's what you're supposed to do. This is what you did. That's why I win. Yeah. And so. 
these blocks really put things in context. You can use them to set the scene. You can use them to show damage. And I was going to kind of save this one for last. Uh -huh. You can use them to show justification. I put this on there for my criminal clients and lawyers that are doing criminal because I don't want you to think this doesn't apply. I trained the Army JAG officers and Navy and Air Force yeah. by this block method because they all do criminal cases. And if you're justified in your action, it's not a crime. Self-defense is a justification block. In the criminal uh, military JAG context? In every context. Really? Criminal law and state. So if you're coming at me with a knife saying I'm going to kill you, I can shoot you. Yeah, That's a justification block. But look at what you've got to do way before you say he was coming at me with a knife and I shot him. No. What happened? He gave me the, he gave me the stink eye across the street. He gave me the finger across the street. He started screaming something I couldn't understand and running at me. And as he got closer, I could make out what he was saying. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you got to do the setup. you got to do the scene. you got to do the context. And each one is a separate block. What lawyers are bad about doing is they just cram all this information in here and they go from one conclusion to the next. Well, that goes to my saying, don't tell me you love me, show me, and I'll decide. Because don't tell me you engaged in self-defense. Let me come to that conclusion. Give me the facts, the scenario, and the setup blocks that lead me to the conclusion you didn't have another choice. Right. Yeah. They like to cross-examine our doctors sometimes on doing tr unnecessary treatment or that didn't even treat our clients. Um, I feel like I could use this in terms of context of like, Doctor, what does a doctor do to uh, diagnose and treat a patient and then show him what he did do and then is the conclusion then that he did what he's supposed to do? Is mm -hmm. that how you do that? Here's what he's supposed to do. Here's what he did. That's why we win. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Yeah. Now, I want to introduce you to the string of pearls. We can't do it because we're in a limited environment here and plus we need more people to do it. But string of pearls is an improv game that I use to create my directs, my crosses. By the time I've done string of pearls completely vertically and horizontally, I have 85% of my directs and crosses written. I've got 85% of my closing argument and my opening statement written. And I know that the people watching this are thinking, okay, I gotta learn how to do the string of pearls. We'll show you that some other time. But string of pearls is stringing together concepts, virtues, elements to create a story. Yeah. And so String of Pearls brings in the story context of how you use these blocks of ice to chill that liquid, how you use these blocks of ice to scale that summit, how you use these blocks immovable objects to get where you want to go. Yeah, and it's one of those things I think where the witness, in, at least on cross-examination, doesn't know what's happening until it's too late, right? I love that you said that. I want to close my block demonstration with this. It's okay to be underestimated. They never see you coming. <laughs> I'm so Ray true. Foreman. I'm Chris Stoy. We're Warriors for Justice, looking to seek justice for you, and thanks for watching. Tune in again and uh, listen to our next segment, which will be coming very soon near you. Thanks.